Okay, so the notion here is to, in, to put randomness into our simulations. And we already know a lot about this just from the homework you've been doing. Um, why do we want randomness in our simulations? Um, for, because there's complexity in the world. Um, things aren't constants in the real world, and so they shouldn't be constants in our simulation. Uh, if we know, that's a different question, but if we know the distribution that our data, our input data follows, that's great. Then we can sample from it, from this distribution. Uh, not for this, this class, but uh, maybe next week or the week after, we'll be looking at how do we know what the distribution is? How do we know that our, for example, that our inter-arrival times are exponential? Okay, it's a different question. Right now, all we know is we need randomness. Um, you saw that when you, uh, for those of you, well, even when you did the uniform distribution, and for those of you who did your the Excel using the exponential distribution, it was all based on a random the random number generator, RAND, which gave you a random number between zero and one, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the first thing, and that's what this lecture really is all about. It's about the base randomness, not about generating uh, vari variates from a particular distribution. Um, we could, although we don't, we could use real randomness in our simulation, right? If you, if you haven't thought about it, you could think about it now. Um, we could use, we, and is in fact, the, the checkout stand started out that way, where we were using something that was really random, uh, tossing a die, um, chips in a hat, labeled one to 10, and you can see there are other, other ideas, a roulette wheel. Um, it, generally speaking, when you have a truly random number, there's some real physical uh, process that generates the randomness. Um, radioactive decay, um, bumping electrons off of a wall or towards a wall and so it bounces off and uh, measuring the distance from the center or from, a, from an edge. Um, something that results in randomness and that can be measured. Um, that sounds extremely uh, messy and extremely expensive. So you can understand we don't do that. Um, however, we might do that to generate random numbers, right? Uh, we've all, I, if you haven't, you can look look it up when uh, you, get, you get home or well, you are home probably. When you get to a book in either probability or statistics, at the back of the book, there'll be a random numbers table. You probably used it before in your undergraduate studies. Um, what, what were these, uh, where did these random numbers come from? Well, we know where they came from. They came from the RAND Corporation which actually used an electronic simulation of a roulette wheel um, for the randomness, true, true randomness, attached to a computer to generate the measurements, the values. And th that wasn't good enough, even though it was truly random. Um, so they had to also test it. And perhaps there was some filtering going on to make sure that um, extreme values, let's say, uh, you know, weren't left in. It was certain parameters that they needed to uh, match. Um, your book of, of random numbers comes from, um, or the table of random numbers at the back of your book comes from a book that was put out in 1955 by Rand with those random numbers. And in addition, um, between in the, you know the late 1940s and on, uh, the Rand Corporation made these random numbers available to people on a magnetic tape um, so that, you know, you, you don't have to actually key in the values from the random number table. And what you see there on the screen is just a clip, a piece of the random number table. Um, and it's, in, it's grouped in, in units of five digits. 
and it looks two-dimensional, but it's not two-dimensional. It's just a one long stream of random digits. Um, so if you look at the, the top left, it starts with seven, seven, three, seven, three, five, four, five, nine, six, three, and so on across the across the row and then in major row order. Um, and all that was was a convenient way of arranging one long stream of random digits. Uh, so those they don't have anything to do with each other. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that they're in groups of five, or that there's it looks like it's in two dimensions. None of that is uh, none of that is important. It's just a stream of random digits. So we could use true randomness. These digits are truly random. We could still get access to it on an electronic an electronic form. We could probably get a a file with it. Um, think about why we don't. You know, I'm not asking people to contribute because we're recording, and I know people um, may not wish to. But please uh, do feel free, if you don't mind, to just unmute yourself anytime and jump in, uh, and either answer questions or ask your own. Um, so think about it. If we have a file of random numbers, or in this case, random digits. How do we access it for our simulation program? Um, we would have to read a digit from the file. Maybe we'd have to read a sequence of 10 digits from the file, if that's what we need. Use it in the simulation, discard it, and then go to the next one and read another number and use it in the simulation. And you may not realize this, uh, but um, reading from an external file is extremely expensive. It, it takes a long time. It takes a lot of computer time. It's the, the, probably the most expensive thing that you could be doing in the, the context of uh, if you're paying for computer time, for example. Uh, it's a very inefficient use of your time. Uh, so it, we could do it, but now let's move on to look at something that might be almost as good and sometimes maybe even better. All right, what we actually use are, are not random numbers, even though the function in, in Excel is called rand. Um, they're really pseudo random numbers. And if you look at the diagram on the slide, that's exactly what a pseudo random number generator does. It outputs a random number and then uses that random number as input in order to generate the next number and the next number and the next number. So there's a stream of random numbers, each one generating the next. And naturally it's booted up externally before you get into that loop by a single random number that's used once. And that's called the seed, S-E-E-D, that should probably be I, I should probably put that in the slide, shouldn't I? Uh, so that random number that's used once as input to the pseudo random number generator is the seed, which then produces the entire stream of random numbers that comes after it. It's nice to know because if we ever want to duplicate what we've done before, all we have to do is use the same seed and it will produce the same stream of random numbers every single time. And if we don't want to duplicate what we did before, but we, we want true randomness, we just start with a different seed, which has its own issues, of course, as we know. Um, so not only are truly random numbers inefficient and more expensive to use, especially when we're talking about computer time even uh, many simulation programs are you know take a very long time uh, some of them even have to be run on a supercomputer um, however they're still doable um, in addition to that reason uh, pseudo random numbers are better uh, because well it's faster which not only means that I don't have to pay for that lengthy computer time but it's faster I don't have to wait such a long time for my program to run. In the programs we've been doing, that's not an issue. Um, but, but in other cases, it is. 
Um, but even more, probably the best reason for using pseudorandom numbers uh, is because I can actually not replicate, I can duplicate what I've done before. If I have the same model and the same random numbers, I will get exactly the same thing that I got before. So you're going to say, why would I want that? Why would I want to get the same thing I got before? Um, there are cases when you would want that. Suppose I'm uh, planning um, to renovate my hospital emergency room. Wouldn't it be nice if I could take the customers I had yesterday, do the renovation, and then run the same customers with the same illnesses through the emergency room tomorrow after the renovation and look at the differences? Well, I could do that by, by this, this feature of reproducibility. Uh, if I use a pseudo random number generator as opposed to truly random numbers. Um, certainly, if I use a, a pseudo random number generator as opposed to um, just uh, experimenting in the real world. Okay. Truthfully, with truly random numbers, as long as I have saved them in some format, I can reuse them. Sure. Um, a disadvantage of pseudo random numbers and especially a disadvantage if we want to keep on using a different seed uh, in order to have um, to not have the same um, uh, the, the same uh, entities moving through the system at the same rate and at the same time each time. Um, every pseudo random number generator has what's called periodicity. Um, there is a finite period during which every uh, random number generates another new random number. But after a while, it goes back, it cycles back to the beginning. And uh, you have the very same uh, stream of random numbers from that point. Okay. Obviously, clearly, that's a problem, especially if you don't know what's going on. All right, so everyone wants to see what a pseudo random number generator looks like. Here's one. It's a simple one. And as you can see, it's also an old one. Um, it's presumably not what we're using in our calculators, in programs, in Excel, uh, because there are better, more efficient ones. But the nice thing about this is it's simple to, to do by hand and it's simple to understand. Um, okay, let's see how it works. It's called middle square. Um, we start with, as always, we start with a random number of a certain number of digits. In this case, we're looking for an uh, n of is even. So, you know, whatever it is, uh, whatever you decide on, uh, that you, you figure out what your seed will be, um, some random number, you can even start with a sequence of random digits, an even number of them, from the random number table. Uh, take the random number, do some arithmetic to it. That's what all of these um, random number generators do. Uh, they take the random number, do some arithmetic to it, and output, spit out uh, the next random number in the sequence. In this case, what are we doing? We're squaring it. We're adding zeros to the left, which we know um, is doable and doesn't change the value. And uh, we're going to form a sequence. We add enough digits to form a sequence of two n digits. So if we have, let's go to the example. Um, if we have uh, one 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 as our, that's a wonderful seed, right? If we have one 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 as our as our first random number. We square it. Get one two three four three two one. That's seven. We put the zero on on the left, which doesn't change things, but makes it an eight digit number. And um, the center is two, three, four, three. We take the, the middle four digits to create the new random number of four digits. Okay. And the more digits you use, obviously, um, the, the better you'll be, especially if you're doing this for cryptography. Uh, this, this is one that's probably not going to be used because 
uh, the, the periodicity is very small. It starts to repeat very quickly. Why couldn't you preview my file? Let's see if I get it now. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, what should a good pseudorandom number generator have? It's, this is pretty much common sense. <laughs> I think you could figure all of these out on your own. Uh, but let's take a look. Let's go down the list. Um, they should be random. Of course, they're not going to be random. How do we know that pseudo-random numbers are not random? How, how, how do we know they're not random? Well, if I give you a pseudo-random number that goes into the generator, I can predict what the output will be. That's the very definition of relatedness, of, of not being random. If you can predict what your random number will be, clearly it's not random. If you can compute a random number using a bunch of arithmetic, clearly it's not random. So our pseudo-random numbers aren't really random. That's why they're called pseudo-random. They behave like random numbers. All right. I see a chat flashing. Is that okay? Any, any problem with that? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I, I should learn my lesson. Um, if you see something in the chat, somebody check to see if it's important and um, give me Morse code or you could even send me an email. I have my phone right here if you don't want to speak. Okay. Um, all right. So basically pseudo random numbers appear random. They act random. Um, Clearly, they should be reproducible because one of the things we liked is the fact that as long as we have the seed, we can produce the same stream of random numbers each and every time, every single time. That's not only something we like, it's critical because there's no point in, in using pseudo random numbers otherwise over truly random numbers. It's a huge advantage. We want the algorithm to be fast, we want it to work quickly, we don't want to have to wait to get the random numbers, as you know from working with Excel, once things get a little bit complicated, uh, even a few seconds of a delay when things are recomputing annoys us. Um, we want to, to make efficient use of re computer resources. So it's not only time, it's also space. In other words, how much storage space is used, where the storage is. Uh, whenever we say efficient in relation to computer resources, we're talking about issues of time and space. Uh, we want to make sure that even though we know there will always be cycling, there will be periodicity, we want to make sure that the algorithm we use has a long period. It doesn't cycle too soon because it's pretty much useless if it does. Um, and we want to make sure that not only do we want numbers to be random, but we don't, we want them to be distinct. We don't want to get the same number over and over again. That, if that happens, that means the whole thing just degenerated. Um, how can we test random numbers? The fact of the matter is that pseudo random numbers are tested when, when, uh, when someone, uh, let's say we, um, tests a pseudo-random number generator uh, for goodness uh, to see how good it is. They're going to be. It's going to be tested to see if the numbers are quote unquote random, which basically means do they act like random numbers? We know they're not random, but we want to know if they act like random numbers. Um, these these pseudo-random number generators do test well. They act like random numbers for the most part. There's a little bit of an issue with Excel, uh, at least in the 2010 edition. Um, the interesting thing is that if you do higher level testing, which of course we're not doing in this course, but if you ever find yourself in a situation where you are doing higher level testing and by higher level, I mean um, multi-dimensional hyperplane testing. So in other words, when we test the stream of random 
digits or a stream of random numbers, um, we're testing a, something linear, right? But if you take these numbers and look at them in a hyperplane, very often patterns emerge. And um, the people who, the mathematicians who study this have basically said, there's no such thing as a truly random pseudo random number generator. But as always, what we're looking for is good enough. We're looking for it to be good enough, random enough. If it passes the tests of randomness, uh, we're happy, then we're good. Okay. So even though, so I'm gonna move on to